It's the game of roses. Welcome to the game of roses. This is the game of roses. Welcome to the game of roses. Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues, and today is Friday, which means this is This Week in Bachelor Nation. We're going to have all those tids. We're going to have all those parasocial plays. We're going to have some screams from the pit at the end of this episode. And of course, we're going to have a state of the game. Very interesting state of the game uh, today that I think mm-hmm. you want to check out. Something that has not happened in Bachelor in a long time. Since season 12. <coughs> Oh, wait. Since season 20? <laughs> I always forget the bubble seasons when I'm doing yeah. my stats calculations. Oh, yeah. right. They film those somewhere. Nemecolon. Yes. But we'll get to all of that. Uh, we do want to mention before we begin today's program that we have a Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash Game of Roses. And things are popping off there. Right now, I'm covering season one of Traders, Pace Case. You're covering the current season of Vanderpump. I'm covering the first season of Vanderpump. Almost done. Just have to do the finale. And then I will do the current season. <laughs> okay. Upcoming you know, current uh, season of Vanderpump. <laughs> the, look, has the season already fully aired? Probably. Right. But guess who's remained spoiler free? Because she's an expert at Ghost yep. Protocol. Me. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, Clues Corners are popping off. And they will continue to pop off, especially next week. A week from this episode is going to come out on Friday. A week from yesterday, meaning next Thursday, a very uh-huh. special show is going to premiere on the CW called The Matchmaker. This is a uh, kind of rebrand of Patty Stanger's show, Millionaire Matchmaker. And now she's got a brand new sidekick. Take a guess who it is, Pace Case. Mm, Danny Padilla. Nick Vial <laughs> is going to be hosting along with Patty Stanger, helping <laughs> people make matches. I can't wait. Your to eye watch aperture this. is popping off right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. The glee. Yes. Anytime is that emanating. I, I can hear the great one is coming back to our television screens. Mm-hmm. I get very happy about that. I can't wait to see him dispensing his logic, which I'm uh, very certain will come from his book, Don't mm-hmm. Text Your Ex happy birthday or whatever the it is. slow judgments yeah. of uh the male great one i i look forward to to seeing what you do with them <laughs> well it's going to be all in clues corner starting next thursday i'm definitely going to be doing the premiere episode the night it comes out so join us for that again at patreon.com slash game of roses we hope to see we're you still doing our pit. live shows by the way at 4 30 p.m That's right. pst even though it's a pregame to nothing right now but there is no off season for gore join us for the lives and we got all of those ad free episodes on patreon as well that's that's discord so much the whole back catalog there's a lot going on in there so we hope you'll join us there and now pace case shall we do this shall we get into this week in bachelor nation with game Game of of roses Roses. State state of the game Oh. All right, this was going to be our first news item, but we decided it was too important, that it's more than just news. Mm-hmm. It is something fundamentally changing our beloved game. So we're going to read you the news item as it was written, then we're going to discuss. Are you ready? Mm. Pace case. I'm ready. This I'm is how ready. it was written. I'm ready. I'm ready. First up in Bachelor Nation news, we say goodbye to Villa de la Vina, at least for the time being, because Jen Tran's upcoming season 21 of The Bachelorette is shooting somewhere else. Villa de la Vina has served as the home stadium of our beloved game since Brad Womack's season 11 back in 2007. But in a recent interview with Entertainment Tonight, Jen Tran revealed that her night one took place at Hummingbird Nest Ranch in Santa Susana, California. While the Hummingbird Ranch might be new to Jen Tran and her incoming rookies... It's not new to Bachelor Nation. This sprawling estate served as the location for the first and only season of The Bachelor Presents Listen to Your Heart. Another change to the format that we'll be seeing in Jen's season includes only one night of shooting in Los Angeles. Immediately after night one, 
Jen and her players supposedly are going to be heading overseas where the entirety of the season is scheduled to take place in locations including Australia and New Zealand. Will Jen have a group date that ends up in a hobbit house like Juan Pablo did in episode (laughs) six of Bachelor season 18? We can only hope. Will she have a fly-infested, tumultuous conversation in the desert of Australia (laughs) uh, in the same location that Peter Weber and Madison Pruitt broke up? Time will tell. God, I hope so. I hope she gets some stuff like that. I think the number one thing that this says to me is budget. Mm -hmm. Only one night of shooting in LA? I agree. Um, It means the budget is bigger. For sure. That's what I'm saying. Yes. (laughs) Budget going upwards. (laughs) I agree. I think that this is, I agree. I think it's a byproduct of the ratings were through the roof on Joey's season. And they were like, oh, let's put a little more money into this and make it bigger, make it better. Because I think Mm -hmm. this isn't a decision they made for Jen Tran. I think this was a decision that was made for that season of Bachelorette. Whoever the Bachelorette was going to be was going to get the same thing. Why they have chosen to... to before. They picked the person. Yes, uh, because all the travel arrangements and all that kind of stuff. They couldn't have made that last minute, I think. But, um, you know, why they decided to switch the mansion, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was it that that mansion, like if they made the decision that we were going to do most of this season overseas, that travel was going to be a big part of it, maybe Villa De La Vina is like, yeah, dude, you can't rent it for one night. That could have been. Hmm. I'm not right. sure. I mean, it's they only do it for what the first week normally. Yeah, first two weeks. Um, it seems unlikely to me that this decision is based on the location being booked, since that hasn't I come up ever since yeah. since uh, they've been using the mansion. But it is a giant departure, and I think that's why we wanted to take a more in depth look at it. Um, to bring back anything from Listen to Your Heart is a shocking move for this franchise. Since I agree. They seem to want to have buried that season and make it like it didn't exist. We all watched it when we were deep in COVID. The game mechanics didn't make sense. You're competing in music, but you also have to show your chemistry on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm so excited. I think it... I. You and I have been calling for a new mansion. Mm -hmm. The mansion is, I'm sorry, it's legacy, but it's dusty. Yes. And all these other shows are going to much nicer places. Oh my gosh, that reminds me of my scream, actually. Mm. I'm changing my scream. (laughs) (laughs) You have multiple screams? I have multiple screams now. You're like, no, 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 this this is a higher ranking scream. I'll use this one later. Um, I agree with you. You know, we, we have talked about it on this show a lot about the need to change the location that the Villa de la Vina, while it has served its purpose, it is from a bygone era. And if you're trying to move this franchise in a new direction, that in my opinion, includes every element of it, how it's presented, where you're shooting it, all of that. And when you look at shows like perfect match, where they are put up in this very luxurious, modern kind of multi-bedroom mansion, you want to see things like that in the bachelor. You want the experience of being a player on the show to be prestigious and fun and like something that you don't want to leave. If you're all forced to cram into bunk beds in a three bedroom house out in the middle of the hottest that part of the valley. Rat infested. <laughs> exactly. And and look, no shade to Villa de la Vina. I have myself, uh, is it dr- drank from a drank, tops. drunken, drinked, whatever the past tense of drink is. I have done that. Drunk. Yeah. Drunk. I have drunk from its waters. Um, mm-hmm the Villa de la Vino waters will forever be a part of my physical corpus. That Mm -hmm. said, we need a new place. 99% water, 1% Villa de la Vino. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. But I don't know if this, the hummingbird nest ranch is the right move. I get that they probably have some kind of deal with them or they have some relationship with the people who run that property because they mm-hmm. shot listen to your heart there but it is no offense it's probably a, free it's a cursed location let's be real <laughs> listen to your heart was not a success and now yeah some piece of that specter haunts this season at least in my mind are we gonna now see someone come in and be like who's chris harrison someone Please. did that on listen to your heart yeah 
are we going to see somebody come in who's a military veteran and say that uh, the Bachelorette is a worse experience than combat? We saw that on Listen to Your Heart. That I don't think we'll ever get again. Is that Danny? Was... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, don't say never. Never say never. You never know. Um, are we going to see Danny Padilla on this season? I mean, I can't believe I didn't make the connection of Listen to Your Heart, and I just guessed Danny Padilla for that yeah. Nick show. Um, I hope so. I hope some of the Listen to Your Heart players are living on those grounds still, just waiting yeah. for another franchise opportunity. Just hiding in the bushes. Do you, um, do you think they're going to add members of the cast now that it is Jen Tran as The Bachelorette? I don't know. Like, I don't know if they had time. They're shooting. They're already in Australia or whatever now. Right. But could they have someone this? crash the season? Some Yeah. Uh, you know, you the could The Asian definitely... Blake Moines. You could have a crasher for sure. And maybe that's even a conversation they've had with Jen Tran early on. Like, look, we know that we cast this for Maria. Is there anybody else from Bachelor Nation that like caught your eye? We'll try to get them in here. Mm. I would love it if they did that. And, and, you know, throw in a fucking ringer. Who cares? Who cares? A lot of people, look, there's no, um, I won't say there's no evidence to this. There's no corroborated evidence to this. But a lot of people believe on Love is Blind season five, Brett Brown and Tiffany Pennywell were ringers. A lot of people believe mm. that they maybe didn't know each other exactly before, but had met each other before and were kind of like, oh, okay. And then they put them on that season, and they're the giant superstars off that season. They're the relationship we all want to watch happen. Can they do that on Bachelor? Sure. Yes. Yes. That's how you make good TV. In quotes, good TV is not Champagne Gate and these dumb kind of like things to instill rivalries. Good, in quotes, TV on The Bachelor is give us the believable love story. Look what happened with Joey Real and Kelsey. relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. We've seen that on Bachelor in Paradise. Well, every couple on Bachelor in Paradise, to me, seems like they've already met before. Yeah. They um, have Coachella. You have to do coach. it in a believable way. Yeah. Which, by the way, Coachella's coming up. Good luck to all of the Bachelor Nation players who are going I out to know. brave the, I the stinging go. sands of Indio, California. I want to go, but Jake is going for a bachelor party. It's like 15 people camping. To Coachella? Yeah. Oh, my God. I camped the last time. I would, I would do it again. I don't care if that was my best friend. If that's your bachelor party, I ain't you coming. You wouldn't go? No, I'll be on a Zoom. What? Put me on a Zoom. I'll be on a Zoom. <laughs> I can't do that. That's not for me. You're on one of those little like iPads that's held up by a stick on wheels <laughs> <laughs> at Coachella. <laughs> that's, honestly, that's how I prefer to be anywhere. Just put iPad on a stick on wheels. <laughs> put, do that for me anytime I have to physically be anywhere that is not my home. Oh, my gosh. But certainly Coachella. Well, I hope you uh, join my bachelor party that way. I will. Is that what you're going to do for your bachelor party? Um, no. Okay. And am I invited to your bachelor party? I don't know. I don't I'm think not so. getting married. <laughs> but it's you will. Future, when the day comes. Fashion. Yeah, when the day comes, I, I assume your bachelor party will be all ladies. Um, at any rate, we are in kind of unprecedented territory with this moving from Villa de la Vina, that mm -hmm. mansion, even during the bubble seasons, it was always like, we got to get back to Villa de la Vina. And I remember interviews with Chris Harrison where he's like, yeah, it's not the same. We've got to do it at this resort or whatever. And it doesn't feel like home. I think that home is no longer your home. I think you've got to get a new home now. The franchise yeah. is moving in a different direction. It's like, I don't want to say kinder, gentler. I think we've used that that phrase before, but it really is more of a, it's more of a 4TRR direction. More modern. Well, hopefully more modern, sure. But even just the tone of the show is is like, it is for the right reasons, it seems like. They're not maliciously screwing players over at every turn. They really do seem to have Except certain Sydney. players' backs. Yeah. What's that? Except Sydney. Yeah, except Sydney, but even that was, you know, it didn't amount to much. It, like she didn't come out of this like um an and I don't know, maybe she did, like an Anna Redman I was going to say, who got raked over the coals. Um I don't know. Oh, I thought you were going to say Brittany um Brittany Galvin getting the Yeah. 
she entertains men from I. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like it was, it seems like the show is is getting back to a course correction that is really about, we have cast this person that ever, anybody on the show will be lucky to wind up with, and now we're watching mm-hmm. that game of attrition through dating. Um, if that's the case, it's like Villa de la Vina, at this point, at least for a longtime fan like us, has so much negative shit associated with it that you got to leave it in the past. Really turn a corner, make this show new, find a new mansion. De- like I get that uh, the Hummingbird Nest Ranch was kind of a, that's a band-aid, you know, it's like we got to do this quick, let's do it here, it's only for one night, that's fine. But when you come back next season for Bachelor 29, get a nice mansion, put some money in it, put it in put Malibu. It on the beach. Yes, exactly. Yes, go back to Malibu. The origins are Malibu. Yeah. They started season 1 at this like cliffside <laughs> cliffside mansion uh, where everybody came in and did their handshake entrances. But God. I think it needs to be nicer. Like Me too. in Love Island and um they they often are like beach adjacent. Yes. Maybe that's too loud, but like have I think it some is. some nice some nice element. Maybe it's yeah. overlooking a lake or whatever. A quieter it's body be of water. Elegant. You yeah. want the show to convey not only is it you're going to be on a reality show and you're going to get to meet the bachelor, bachelorette, and date them. You want the experience, the whole thing to be a fairy tale. Like, in my opinion, the mansion should basically be an extension of the pretty woman date. It should be like, oh my God, I get to live in a palace for two mm-hmm. weeks. Not, I get crammed into 15 yes. bunk beds per room. Uh, that It just can't be like that anymore. A palace would be good, actually. Yeah, they tried to do that in a couple of seasons. Remember... Um, was it Lorenzo mm-hmm. Borghese was in a castle? There was somebody else in a castle too, I want to say. I want to say Matt Grant was. I don't think somewhere. his was. That was no. in LA. His was Phil. There was, was Paris. It... Yeah. They did a Paris season. They did a London season. I'm trying to remember where did they, they started. Did they do a London season? I thought it was New Didn't York, they? Paris, and Rome were the three outside of. LA. They didn't go to London for Matt Grants? Uh whatever. Um Minutia. Yes. I am so excited about this decision. I think I don't think Hummingbird is the landing spot, but I think it's a step in the right direction. I agree. You want it to be an amazing experience that it was like the whole conceit of the show. You're going on uh, what did they call them? Romantic fantasy date, you know, fantasy mm-hmm. suites. It's all supposed to be a fantasy fulfillment. And we, the women who watch the show at all, want to picture ourselves going on this or picture ourselves as the bachelorette. And wow, was, wouldn't this be an amazing way to find my life partner? Yeah. Um, And in those first seasons all of the dates were were like that they were even amounts of people going to fucking vegas going to a spa going mm-hmm. to tahoe hawaii etc and it seemed like a a dream life that you're living out through it yeah those were the group dates god it's so funny to yeah. think back to that time when a group date was like we're gonna put you on a plane and all five of you are going to las vegas where you'll have a stipend and that you can gamble with and then you'll get to go to a spa and get massages now group dates are like you have to take off all your clothes punch her in the face whoa what that tell us the worst <laughs> thing that ha- ever happened yeah. to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let that stuff happen Punch naturally. You don't have to uh, set it up. I mean, the, the PTC stuff, not the forced nudity and violence. But we didn't really have any forced nudity or violence in this season. And it mm-hmm. was not missed, in my opinion. I mean, the most you have is those last two <laughs> spirit guide dates where they get in their bikinis yeah. or whatever. Yeah. At any rate. That is the state of the game. We are looking at an incoming Bachelorette season 21 starring Jen Tran that's not going to be shot at the mansion at all. And most of it's going to be taking place overseas. I think this is a great choice and a good step in the right Mm -hmm. direction. We hope it continues. Now, speaking of continuing, shall we move on, Pace Case, to our next segment? Um, just one more thing. It is also Please. nice for me to see that they're doing this for Bachelorette and not just Bachelor. They tend to put the budget into the bachelor yeah 
um, as the flag show. So it's nice to see they are still stepping it up for, uh, for Jen. Couldn't agree more. And now let's jump into that portion of our program where we discuss all of the numbers associated with our players off the screen. This is This Week in Games. All right, so we don't have any network numbers to speak of, obviously. Our beloved game is off the air now in the long, cold darkness Boo. of the off season. <laughs> I agree. Um, we always complain like, oh, they don't give us enough of an off season. Then when it's here, I'm like, why are they giving us an off season at all? I know. I, know. <laughs> I wish it was back on. Um, that said, we do have some reporting on the Instagram and TikTok numbers, because even though the show is off the air, these gains are still happening in, um, I think, very significant numbers. So let's get into this. We got gays extraordinaire, Joey Grazzi gained 48k this week for a total of 803,000 Instagram followers um and he gained That's a total almost 1 million. He's getting very close. He's getting very close. He's 80% there. He also gained 28.7k on TikTok for a total of 236.5k. You think he's going to crack I a million? I love to see that TikTok number. I on TikTok? No. No, on Instagram. On Instagram? Maybe if he goes in Dancing with the Stars yeah. or Traders, get another bump. But see, like this is this is where the Bachelor producers, I think, should ease up a little bit on the contracts. Like they could get yes. him on Traders now. He could be in season three. He could be coming right, right. off of this into season three. But they won't do it because they have this. I agree. Multiple year long. That's antiquated clause. as well. Yeah, it's just so dumb. It, it's like you need this guy to be out there front and center promoting your show you put him on traders it's yes. like oh another bachelor and this is the biggest bachelor they've had we all want to watch that now you've got the whole of bachelor nation coming in to watch that show because of bachelor nation he becomes bigger bachelor nation becomes bigger it's it's rising want those tide. people to be big even in the off season mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's on peacock you know it it all you know all rises all boats or whatever the tide yeah. you know that phrase yeah the rising anyway. tide top five Instagram gains for the players. It doesn't matter that Daisy Kent wasn't on TV this week, and it clearly doesn't matter that she turned down the crown. The fourth audience has spoken with their thumbs by adding 86,000 new followers to her March to 1 million, bringing her to a total of 833K. She's going to hit it. Unreal. I don't know how she's going to do it, but she's going to hit it. Maybe she gets Dancing with the Stars. Well, this is what I was going to say um, above as well is Joey's TikTok, he's not putting much out there, but Kelsey's, mm -hmm. Kelsey is making great content. We're going to get to some of it later. Incredible TikTok videos that I think could continue the show beyond the show and maybe yes. get boost both of their numbers. I think so too. And as well as Daisy is doing this. Hear me out, Dancing with the Stars producers. Why not cast Grazi and Daisy? competing right. against one another with Kelsey and the audience cheering them both on. Mm -hmm. This is your move. And this Rachel. is your play. Uh, moving on. In her first week post ring win, Kelsey Anderson continues to ride the gain train with another 77,000 pairs of eyeballs signing in to follow her rise to power within the nation, bringing her overall total to 631 K. Pretty good numbers. Our next crown, Jen Tran, might be shooting her season 21 of The Bachelorette currently, but her fans, her trans stands, are sitting on their couches, pressing those follow buttons, giving our first Asian crown 18K of new off-season followers, bringing her total to 182K total. That number got to get up, and it will. Once we get closer to her season coming out, that number's going to explode. That number but is far from a million. It is far from a million, but... I don't know. I think she's going to hit it. My fingers are crossed that she does. Let's go. Moving on. Even though Maria Gorgas also turned down the crown and got eliminated pre-Fantasy Suites, her fans are proving that we still want to know what she's up to in the offseason with 14K new followers, bringing her total to 607,000 followers. Maria is another example. <laughs> she's electric. Yeah. 
put her out there everywhere. All of these people are advertisements for your show. Absolutely. And you don't even have to make the content. They're making it themselves. In fifth place is third place finisher and wet thumb eyelash wish player Rachel <laughs> Nance, who pulled in 11.3K new followers in the first week of the off season, allowing her to finally break through the 100K barrier for a total of 102K. Love not to too see bad. this for Rachel. Yeah, not too bad at all. And now moving on to that uh, top five Instagram chart overall, Daisy Kent came out on top for that finale performance with 833,000 followers. Second place, ring winner Kelsey Anderson, 631K. And friend of Vin Diesel, Maria Gorgas, dropped to third place with 607K total. Next crown, Jen Trans in fourth with 182K. And we got Rachel Nance bringing up fifth place with 102K. So we finally got all five of the top five plus 100K. I love that. It's been I a, love that. I love that too. And it's been a minute since we've seen something like this. I know. It's I coming know. back. I'm telling a you. Minute. Top five TikTok chart. We almost have everyone in 100K. Top spot goes to Daisy Kent, 483,000 followers. I mean, she's posting everyday videos mm -hmm. multiple times a day. Yes. Her content train is not stopping. No, I know. Like Snowpiercer. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy Kent is the Snowpiercer of Bachelor Nation. Uh, I love Snowpiercer. I watched the movie. Did I watch the show? I think I watched some of the show or something. I love the show. I have no memory of it. In second place on the TikTok chart is Kelsey Anderson, who jumped to second with 384.9K. Maria Gorgas dropped to third with 363.1K. And night one player Kira Brush stayed strong in fourth place <laughs> with 120.4K. That Never let go, happen. Kira. <laughs> that type of thing can't happen. But you know what? Something like this already has happened. Uh, Victoria Jameson had almost a million TikTok followers, and no That's one came close to, to her over the course of the season, even though she got knocked out in week two. So uh, this is a little bit of that. Kira Brush did have a bunch of yeah. TikTok followers coming in, obviously. This was more achievable to beat than Victoria Jameson, though. Yes, I agree. <laughs> um, And... In fifth place, Jen Tran, almost there. She's a cusp, 99K in fifth place. She'll hit that for sure, 100K, oh, yeah. for sure. She'll probably do it this week. Um, let's move on, yeah. shall we? To probably already did it. Discussing. Did she? Are you checking right now? No. Oh. Are you? Yeah, hang on. This is real time. We're giving you a real beep, time beep, update. Beep, beep even though this isn't real time because we're Plug recording into this. computer clues. We're recording this right now. Export if I could, information. God. Have you seen that guy um, who got the Neuralink implant playing Mario Kart with his brain? No. It's great. Jen Tran's at 99.1K. She has not yet crossed it, but she got that point. 900. One. Everyone follow Jen Tran on TikTok. Yeah. Now. And now let's move on to discussing some of those tids. This is... Bachelor Nation News. Up first in Bachelor Nation News... We have a successful Bachelor and Love is Blind cross-breeding effort. Bachelor season 14 runner-up <laughs> and VIP superstar Blake Horseman and Love is Blind superstar and 2 million club member Giannina Gibelli have produced a viable offspring, a male human <laughs> child on whom they bestowed the name Heath. Mm. Thank you. Did you like that? I tried to craft I that. I did. I, you know, I love when we discuss bloodlines. <laughs> The uh, <laughs> official announcement of the hybrid child was a joint. <laughs> oh lord! A joint Instagram post from April second, featuring black and white images from Heath's first moments on our dying world, that was captioned: "His first breath took ours away. 
Meet Heath Orion Horseman, born on Good Friday, 329-24. Everyone is home, happy and healthy. His pregnancy and birth were a dream come true. Side note, I'm currently working on a book about uh, kind of dating in the future after AI has taken over everything. And the AI in that book is named Orion. The congratulatory ah, comments. It's what? very astrology. Well, it's, it's named after the the woman who founded this AI company. Her name is Ophelia Ryan. Mm. You see. The congratulatory Clever comments. Girl. Say what? Nothing. Okay. The congratulatory. <laughs> what? <laughs> he goes, Clever girl. Oh, Jurassic Park. Jurassic yeah. Park? Yeah. Uh, this is my Jeff Goldblum, ready Something's from Jurassic not worth Park. Repeating. No, it was because now we're going to do a Jurassic Park joke run. Okay. Bit. Yeah, I just what wanted to do my Jeff Goldblum if I could. Okay. You found out that you could, but you never stopped to think if you should. What do you think? This is my Jeff Goldblum impression. You never. <laughs> it's Nick. <laughs> You're never, yeah, we're always trying to figure out if you're shocked, or you never figured out whether you should. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Catherine asked me perfect. how That's I do perfect. my impressions, and I said, you, all you do is you disconnect your brain from your mouth, and you oh. just let whatever happens happen. Interesting. Is that how your process? No, mine is I try to think of like, an image or video of the person that I'm trying to impersonate. And then I just try to do mm. that. Okay. Moving on. My apologies. Uh, the congratulatory comments <laughs> on this hybrid sorry, child <laughs> were a veritable who's who of the most luminary superstars from both franchises. Gore girl, Jason Tardick wrote, he's beautiful. And so are you two. Can't wait to meet the little stud. Congratulations. Hope you're recovering fast and well. G baby. Love is Blind standout Amber Barnett wrote, OMG, congratulations, mamacita, look at all that hair. Love is Blind season six, I Doer, Amy Corta has added, Heath is forever blessed. Congratulations to your beautiful bundle of joy. That's a Love is Blind blessing. Mm -hmm. Horseman and Horse Belly met on a third wave MTV show called All Star Shore for those keeping track. Mm -hmm. This is to me... Um, magnificent. Is this the first Love is Blind baby? No. Can't be. I think it might didn't, be. Didn't the sword guy have a baby with... Did he? With his lady? Zach Goitowski and Bliss. Yeah. I forget her last name. Um, didn't they have a kid? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. You might be right. Ugh, but no, this is I definitely the first them. hybrid child. That's 100%. This is the two biggest reality franchises on the planet have now joined in a union that has produced life. This. Hmm. Alexa and Brennan are expecting. Yep. Zach and Bliss got pregnant a few weeks or months before them. So they're both still in pregnancy phase. Gestation. Hmm. Yeah, I think this might be the first Love is Blind baby, technically speaking, but it's okay, not a pure blood Love is Blind in baby. February. It's a girl. I think this is it. Hmm. I think Blake Horseman has come into Love is Blind to produce the first Love is Blind child. God, that's incredible. That is amazing. The Bachelor laid claim to the first generation of Love is Blind children. That's like the Harry Potter of that world. A half-blood like, prince. I think you got out, but you didn't. Exactly. Um, congrats, congrats to the couple. I agree. I love the name Heath, like my favorite actor, Heath Ledger. It's like my favorite blizzard at Dairy Queen. Hmm. Up next in Bachelor Nation news, although this union might not have produced a hybrid child, <laughs> news has emerged this week of another Love is Wind Bachelor romantic crossover event with megastars from both franchises. A constant member of the greatest Bachelor player of all time conversation, Canadian North All-Star and Penis sculptor Blake Moynes 
recently appeared on an episode of Out of the Pods podcast where it was revealed that he and Out of the Pods co-host Natalie Lee were romantically involved. Moines and Lee met in the summer of 2022 on a conservation trip to the Caribbean and began dating shortly thereafter. Lee said, quote, I had never been on an animal conservation trip before and I didn't know you. I didn't watch any of the seasons of The Bachelorette you were on. I had heard things about you through social media. I mean, good things. But there was a lot of news at the time regarding your ex. Mm. Natalie also revealed the creation of a Lee Moines marriage pact, saying, if I'm not married by age 35, that's the cutoff? Oh, no. He (laughs) said that we would have kids and get married. Lee is currently 32. Moines and Lee did not reveal how long they dated for or what led to their eventual split. Natalie noted that they still, quote, talk pretty often and that she goes to her ex for, quote, a lot of advice. However, Moines described himself as, quote, very, very single. Will this new third wave of reality TV lead to more cross-pollinations? Time will tell. The answer is yes, though. Of course it will. It's, <laughs> it's super stardom. That's all it is. It's like they're getting famous now in the world of reality TV. It's like when you see Mm -hmm. uh, famous actors dating that were never in the same movie together or an actor dating a singer or Travis Kelce dating Taylor Swift, although Mm -hmm. she was way more famous than him. He at least was like a semi-famous pro athlete. It's like once you're in the world of fame, anything goes. But I love that they're keeping it within like the top two dating Mm -hmm. games. It's fascinating to me. They're going to all the same parties. They are... They have this shared lived experience that no one else can really relate to. Exactly. How did, oh, hey, on your show, oh. uh, how often did they tell you you could not poop? And Moines is like, oh, that was once a day. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, same for me. How about on your show? Yeah, did what they about your panic food attacks? For me? Yeah. How many they... times were you wrongfully imprisoned on your show? Oh, it was 24 hours a day for two months. You? Yep, same. Okay. Mm. LOL. Up next in Bachelor Nation news, hard launch alert. (laughs) Bachelor season 21 Uh, night one girl and BIP season five and six survivor Angela Amezqua and Bachelorette season five runner up and Bachelor Pad season one survivor Kipton Locke made their relationship public on Instagram with a series of photos depicting the happy couple along with a caption that read, After many amazing months together, guess it's about time we share our love with the world. Kipton, nice. I know. Haven't heard that name in a a little bit of a minute, but good to see that he's back here. everyone loved him. I know. And he's made good. He was... All stars from around the nation chimed in with Caroline Lunny writing, Finally! The hard (laughs) launch I've been waiting for. Annalise Puccini chimed in with, About time! So happy for you two. Haley Ferguson of the Ferguson Twist Twisters. I was going to say the Ferguson Twisters, but it's the Haley Ferguson of the Ferguson Twin Sisters made an appearance with a comment that read, So happy for you. And Ileana Panetto added, OMG, I was not ready for the hard launch today. <laughs> We're always happy to see that if a player can't keep it in their season, at least they're keeping it in the nation. Congrats. Mm-hmm. Go out. To no these civilian two. summer. Exactly. Once you're in the in the game, any game really, but especially our beloved game, just try to stay away from the civilians if you can. Mm-hmm. There's no need. It's like Make a god coming down to the the regular peons and being like, oh, "Let me take one yeah. from from you guys." Just know your worth. Exactly. Finally, in Bachelor Nation news, just a quick reminder, Clues' Great One returns to television in seven short days as Patty Stanger's sidekick on The Matchmaker on CW. Clues will be covering it in Clues Corner. Can't wait for it. Um, I hope you'll join me. Now, let's move on to that portion of our program in which we talk about all those plays our players are making off the field and on their telephones. This is... The parasocial play, 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 play of the week. Ring winner Kelsey Anderson made a series of high engagement plays this week via TikTok. First, 
She and Joey filmed a quick cheek kiss, then mouth kiss video to a Samantha Jones audio. The caption reads, Pookie at Joey Grazia Day. 725.3K likes, 7.2 million views. Jesus. She did a get ready with me, GRWM, which doesn't mean grown woman, which is what I had thought, Mm. for her first public date with Joey. 302K (laughs) likes, 3 million views. Then she and her golden bachelor contender father made a joint play in which Kelsey laughs as her dad responds to a TikTok audio asking all these questions in the format. Dad, would you come fishing with me? Dad, meet your granddaughter. And he responds with extremely strong face play reaction shots, ending on, Dad, do you believe in God? Which he nods to. 144K likes, 1.3 million views. Unbelievable. 7.2 million views. I mean, that's basically double any number that the show was pulling in. It's incredible. This is why I think maybe we can get Joey into the million. Maybe if we keep putting out this content. Absolutely insane. Moving on. Daisy Kent has continued to roll out the highest volume of high performing content from this season's players, including a grown woman (laughs) for Easter (laughs) church. (laughs) Uh, Get ready with me for Easter church. Taking back Mexico videos, a reveal of her two friends performing the role of media coaches, etc. But our favorite player she made, our favorite play, sorry, she made was in the comments section of one of her posts. One person commented on the Eller of Bees. What's that mean? <laughs> Liquor of Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, Sorry. The, this person, Lord Baba, commented on her post, no more roses, just daisies is a bar. And then Daisy Kent replied, at Lord Baba, should I make another music video? I oh. so hard at this. It's so, so funny. funny. So funny. We God, love she's when great. players can laugh at themselves. I agree. Maria Gorgas posted an Instagram story, a solo image of actor Evan Peters from American Horror Story with the caption, on a serious note, who's hooking me up? Mm. Someone help her. Interesting. Is he still with Emma Roberts? Is that old news? I did not know who this person was. I had to. Evan Peters? Yeah. Is, pre- is he in anything other than American Horror Story? Yeah, he was an X-Man. He's American Horror Story. I've seen him in a bunch of like TV shows and movies and stuff. He was an X-Man that could run very fast. He was like the Flash, but Marvel. Quicksilver, I think, was the name of the character. I don't, I don't recognize him. He looks kind of like Michael Sarah. All right. Fair enough. This week also included the wonderful parasocial opportunity... We have come to know and love as April Fool's Day. Charity and Dotton pretended to break up by posting cryptic Instagram stories <laughs> and archiving their photos together. Like, is that even an April Fool's? It, it's like they're going to such lengths to be like, okay, post Clues. it, then archive it, then this. I, I did not feel good about this. My stomach yeah. sank. I, I got bamboozled again. Obviously, yeah. it's really easy be- news to believe due to the yeah. the ratio of successful versus unsuccessful relationships in this franchise. And uh, this is not my favorite kind of April Fool's joke. I agree. Had a darkness Mm-mm. to it. Had a darkness. Tyler Cameron posted a voluntary nudity <laughs> play to his Instagram a shirtless torso photo encouraging people to subscribe to his OnlyFans. This is the runner-up for me. Did you see what it was? I want to say it was Chicks in the Office did. They called him on their show. I guess they're friends no. with him. And he answered. and was like, hey, what's up? And then they said, you're live on the show with us. Is this OnlyFans thing real? And he <gasps> admitted that it was not. So if you subscribed, what did you see? I don't know. There's only one player I know who has done a true OnlyFans. And that, I can guarantee, does have real content on it. Yes. A lot of people sent me screenshots and stuff from it when it was happening. We're talking, of course, about Chad Johnson. And his OnlyFans was 
It was an OnlyFans. Yeah. Um, there's no other way to put it. Yep. Moving on. All these were strong plays. However, there can be only one winner. Our parasocial play of the week goes to Becca Martinez, the free spirit player who entered our beloved game via Red Corvette Grandy and identified Ari Lion Dyke's MILF preferences. <laughs> 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 and identified Ari Landyke's MILF preferences, made a two-slide prank post of her in a standing hooju with partner Grayson, uh, announcing the couple were cast on the next season of Couple to Thruple, and then a video post of the couple on a beach, slow-mo kissing with the caption, quote, April Fool's, well, cats out of the back. I think that was an edit. <laughs> yeah, I think it was an edit as well. Um, I, I remember reading this when it originally posted, and it did just say, well, cats out of the bag, um, monkey hiding eyes emoji. Streaming this summer on Peacock, hashtag Peacock, Peacock, hashtag Couple to Thruple. In all honesty, taking this opportunity, this was a huge leap of faith for us. Those who have been following for a while probably know we've been curious about non-monogamy. When we were approached for season two, we decided to go for it. After all, we could use another pair of hands around the house. Uh, Laughing, crying emoji, dot, dot, dot. So excited for this journey. End quote. 60K likes, 5.4K comments, including heavy hitters like Lauren Leindyke. Getting got Becca Kufrin saying it takes a village and Peacock saying this really made me think I missed an email <laughs> laughing, crying emoji. Some did not like it. One user saying, quote, gross. I hope you repent because God's design for monogamy within marriage is the only way <laughs> I'm sad to miss out on other content from you, but I can't follow you anymore. Also, non-monogamy is just adultery. Don't fool yourself just because it's consensual. It's still sin and offensive to the Lord. Crying face emoji. End quote. Becca they is got the, got. <laughs> yeah, they got got for sure. Becca is the undisputed queen of April 1st, making high quality, high believable posts, including promoting baby self tanner and sending her kids to boarding school. However, importantly, her posts don't make you mad when you realize you've been bamboozled. And we were thrilled to see her absolutely dominate the conversation once more. Hats off to Becca Martinez. Everyone knows that she does this on April Fool's. And still, mm -hmm. like you're saying, you, you put this uh, Tons of comments reply like in there. That. This person was so outraged. They're like, not only am I going to unfollow Becca Martinez, I have to write this and put this comment out here. Absolutely yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people like that. And I think that that's part of why Becca's posts are so are believable is because she yeah. uses kind of this influencer language and stuff yeah. that makes it sound like, oh, this might be something they yeah. did. It's you not know, like free spirits. Even, even language that would have been like, everybody knows we're looking for a third. That would be too jokey. Everybody knows we're exploring non-monogamy is like the perfect language to be like, wait mm -hmm. a minute, is this real? It, yeah. She's so good at it. And even the image I that mean, they made it makes sense looks they might have pretty like, real. thought or discussed. Yeah. Um, they Photoshopped that thing. They put the, the logo from the couple of thruple on there. Like it looked pretty real. Photoshop? They shot on a beach. Yeah. This is my only <laughs> tip I would have given them. My only critique yeah. of the play. They should have had somebody in the background, a woman in the background with their back to them. Like, who is this mystery woman that's like coming into their relationship, you know? Ooh. Because couple to thruple is like the idea. Visually, they did not convey the idea of the show in that image. It's just them together. There should have been a gotcha. third person in it. In my opinion. I agree, but it should have been a man. Sure. Or maybe have Devil's both. Have a guy some. on the left and a, a woman on the right, you know? Mm. They're coupled to well, what's a you know. what's a quad thruple? Quad thruple? Quad quadruple? Um, quadruple? I don't, I don't know up that high. Quad, quad couple? Quadruple? <laughs> well, quadruple is a word, but what's the quadruple couple? Quadruple. Quadruple. Uh, Cu couple to I don't quadruple. No. Do you think there's just once you get a certain high number, it's just like group? Or something like that? No. I think there's numbers for all of them, right? And Quad, sister wives. What'd you say? Quadruple? First wife, second wife, third wife, fourth wife. Quint couple? Oh, sister wives, yeah. they call it. Okay. Well, congratulations. Hats off to Becca Martinez. As always, fantastic parasocial play. She is the mm -hmm. queen of April 1st. Nobody's even coming close. But uh, we also had a, a strong play this week that was not a human being. 
This week, the parasocial creature of the week goes to a very special little creature that took center stage in Puerto Vallarta. It seems Bachelor Season 28 superstar Daisy Kent is there on vacation with her family, and she posted a TikTok this week featuring her little sister Adeline holding a teeny tiny lizard in her hands, which she then uses to scare her mother in a cute and hilarious sisterhood play that is par for the course from one of the greatest sisterhood players we have ever seen. Please go check that out on Daisy's TikTok, and congratulations to Daisy, to Adeline, to the entire Kent mm-hmm. family and to the newest member of the Kent family, this little lizard. Now, I didn't know about Adeline. This was a great Adeline reveal for me. Yeah, I agree. She's center stage in it. Um, mm-hmm. Let's move on now to the final portion of our program where Pace Case and I jump into the bottom of the pit and issue forth our screams about how our fandom of this show has affected our lives uh, for the, the better and the worse, as you might get to hear in. Okay, so I'm actually going to say I have one that's about San Francisco, a.k.a. Mm. Alex Michelle Country, but I think I'm going to save that and go with the one that flashed to me in our opening, which is I am going to a wedding, Mm. a destination wedding, and I have found out that the resort that we are staying at is... The resort where they just filmed the Love is Blind Denver post pods. Oh, my God. Yes. I know. That's I know. incredible. Like, it's just happening to me. Like, I found this out after the fact from people That's who don't pit. even watch The Bachelor. That is I mean, the dark or energy of the pit. <laughs> right? And I literally was trying to think. I'm like, the show won't have aired by the time this wedding happens. So yeah. I'm like, I'm going to film myself in every single location <laughs> so that I could be like, okay, this is what I did yeah. where this thing happened, where this thing happened. It's just me alone. <laughs> yeah. And you have to film yourself in reactions to like, in case a dumping happened, in case a make out yeah. happened, in case everything. Yeah, like, oh my God, oh, that's hilarious. But congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, I love when stuff like that happens. I was so excited when I found out. I was like, oh my God. I was like, dang, we must be going somewhere nice. Yeah. This This is is like when I ran into Lanise Adams on the street. Like once the dark energies start Mm -hmm. pooling around you, things in your life just start happening. I mean, that's just how it goes. I mean, Lanise Adams, the first kiss in all Bachelor history. That's, I mean, that's magic. Yeah. There is a God, I guess. Just like Kelsey's dad said. I agree. And speaking of the dark energies of our beloved game, um, my scream this week involves almost being claimed by death in service (gasps) of my fandom. No. Yes. I was on the road. I don't remember if I posted this to my stories or not. Did you remember me posting a picture? I don't remember you telling me about an almost death. Because I I was immediately kind of, uh, the idea of the death was erased because I got what I needed. I was driving behind a car the other night, and the license plate read Tings, T-I-N-G-S. I don't know what it means to the person driving the car, but I know what it means to me, and I know what Mm -hmm. it means to the pit, and I had to get the picture. So I was speeding, uh, maybe going through a red light, almost crashing into the Tings car. Maybe or maybe not. This is not T-I-N-G-S an admission of guilt. T-I-N-G-S or Z? S. Huh. Did I not post this picture to my story? Do you remember no, seeing it? No, maybe you did. That, it well, sounds familiar, but I'm like, is it because I've seen the license plate in real life or is it because you posted it? I don't know. Maybe you did post it. <laughs> Excuse me as I scroll through 500 pictures of my cat. And now I'm going to show you, Pace Case. That's the picture of it. Oh, it's a Z. Oh, it is a Z. Sorry. Nonetheless... <laughs> Uh. <laughs> that's a gorgeous license plate I yeah. have almost um, hurt myself for worse license plate photos yeah if that makes you feel better um, yeah it does a little thank you um, but I, I had to take the picture I simply had to get the photo I had to get it yeah. up close it was at night so there was some glare reflection I had to get the right thing and um, I was not the only person in the car and I was reprimanded oh god <laughs> 
like that's the uh, yeah. little post note. Oh yeah, I am yeah. some. I almost killed someone else, dude. Maybe that's the real scream. Is like if I die in service of the pit, whatever. That's my choice. Mm-hmm. Fine, so be it. But that just makes sense statistically. Yeah. I can't drag other people into danger in service of my manias. Oh my gosh, clues. Yeah. But that's it. That's my I scream. Mean, I understand it. Thank you. Now, let's move on to another scream. As many of you know, if you listen to this program, or if you're new to the program and you don't know, every week we pluck a scream from the pit to play it right here for all of us to listen to and analyze. If you want to submit your very own scream, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash gameofroses. There, you will get access to our Discord. On that Discord, there is a channel called Screams from the Pit. You can submit your one-minute or shorter audio clip of exactly what your scream is into that channel. We go through them all. We play the best ones here. Are you ready for today's Pace Case? I'm ready. Here we go. Let's go. Hey, Pit. Love you guys. Um, I have a wild scream for us today. I was recently on a bachelorette trip um, with a group of girls, and we were all just hanging out talking about shows we were watching and I brought up The Bachelor obviously and this one girl was like oh yeah I mean do you want to be on it I could probably get you on I was like what are you talking about she was like well my brother is Thomas Jacobs like I'm friends of the producers I spit my drink out I was like I'm sorry your brother is Thomas Jacobs like BBTC married (laughs) with a kid to Becca Kufrin, Crown Royale, like, what? So, of course, I had to ask for some tea, and boy, oh, boy, do I have tea. Please let me know if you want to hear it, because it's too long for this one-minute voice recording. Love you guys. Oh, no. I love a scream saying they have a secret tea cellar, but due to the time limit, they can't. I'm like, oh, God. This scream had a cliffhanger. Please send us your tea. Just put it on the Screams channel. We will see it. I we have will chills. find it. Me too. But this is exactly what I was talking about. This is a high level scream. Once you're in the pit yeah. long enough, the dark energies yeah. of the pit begin to alter seemingly random events in your life, but you begin to realize these are not random. The pit is making this happen. <laughs> you are on a random bachelorette party, and there just happens to be the sib of one of the greatest paradise players of all time who was able to uh wind up with Becca Kufra and the only tropical royale in the history of our game. They now have child. They now have marriage. Mm-hmm. They now have hybrid season child. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, we sure hybrid season child. Let's, let's say that is it. <laughs> That's now a thing. Um, well, um, I would be upset in this circumstance that mm-hmm. you're like finding it out when you're there later on. I'd be like, you're not leading with this when I meet you. Huh? Yeah. This is like I wouldn't when... even say my name. If I was the sibling of somebody from Bachelor, like let's say I was BBTC's <laughs> brother, that would be what yeah. I would put on my little name card. I would just say like, oh, hi, I'm BBTC's brother. My name's not really important in that uh, conversation, mm-hmm. I feel like. That would be my Instagram bio. Yeah, BBTC's brother. BBTC's bro. I'm I'll a put that on my dating profile. Tropical Royale in law. <laughs> Something like this. I mean, congrats on hanging out with such um, in such a high-powered friend group. That's yeah, incredible. that too. Hang on I to that I person. Had this. If you just met them at the um, bachelorette party, definitely invite them to some other event. Get them in your yeah, book club. Secure that whatever. friendship. Secure the friendship. Drag them in, and uh, we can't thank you enough for that scream. Very high level. It it means that you're at a pit level. Where, again, the dark energies are starting to affect your day-to-day life. Yeah, you're creating your own gravity of dark energies. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I laugh at this. Like, I know it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, but there's just so much weird shit that's happened in my life as a result of just giving in to this fandom that it's almost hard to deny at this point, you know? Oh, I mean... It's I. It's made me feel like I'm living in a simulation. That's how much it's happened. And I know Same. it's kind of like the thing of like, if you're buying a certain car, you'll see that car everywhere. But the but with Bachelor, where I'm just like seeing Bachelor phrases everywhere. But yeah, this is gorgeous. I'm yeah. so happy. I'll, 
I'll give you the the buying a red car, seeing a red car thing for sure. I had that happen once when I was in the Grove, ha- hallowed <laughs> ground in the Bachelor franchise. I was at the Grove eating in the Cheesecake Factory, and in this specific <laughs> Grove Cheesecake oh, Factory, there's a glass window at a certain table that you can ask for, which I do every time. There's a glass window right next to the table that overlooks the lobby of the movie theater. And I remember eating there. I'm eating, and I look down out the glass window, and I see somebody walking through the lobby. It is Robbie Hunter, Robbie Hayes, from whatever season that was in Bachelor, and I almost Mm -hmm. lost my mind. The first Ken. Yeah, first Ken. I almost sprinted out of my... Uh, Cheesecake Factory seat to go try and take a picture, but I didn't. But I'm shocked you didn't. Well, that's... you didn't risk anyone's lives after that sighting. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, then I got into a high speed chase to see if I could get a picture of him at a red light. No, I did not do that. But that to me is like a buy a red car, see a red car type thing. Winding up at somebody's bachelorette party and it's the sibling of Big Body. That's something. That's a little more involved, in my opinion. Yeah. How many siblings can Big Body even have? Yeah, I don't know. But we thank you for your scream. High level, beautiful to hear. And please give us the tea. We will be Mm -hmm. on a lookout for it in the Discord if you feel so inclined. And if anyone else feels so inclined, put your screams in that Discord too. We go through them all. Like I said, patreon.com slash Game of Roses if you want to get on the Discord, submit your screams. But uh, that's it. That wraps up today's show. Thank you everyone for joining us for This Week in Bachelor Nation. We will be back next Tuesday with How to Save Bachelor in paradise pace case and i have been toiling on this document we are going to save this show period Mm -hmm. and we hope that all the producers out there will listen to it take what we have to say seriously because i think what we've come up with here is basically a new show it takes the Mm -hmm. the spirit of what bachelor in paradise should be and it it puts it on full display so we hope you'll join us for that and paradise is worth saving justice for paradise Paradise is worth saving is a good hashtag. I love that. Hmm. Hashtag I love that, I mean. Hashtag I love MILFs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Before we go, Pace Case, as always, what is that dwab at? Sorry, I was just listening to this thing about um, American Pie and how it made the term MILF much more popular. Interesting. It's been... 8,047 days without an Asian bachelor. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. Please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then 